The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support rich ones or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care or leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. So, never thought this would be a thing, but sure, why not? Ladies and gentlemen, my inspiration to commentaries, the reason I'm here, TOG Professor. A commentator who's been in the community since 2011 and has been unfortunately off and on debt since I joined in 2015. He's fortunately working on fixing that, but then there's his recent video on the gamer. Oof. Let's dive in. Well, isn't this just a kicker? I love how we're starting with you even giving out that this is not a list to be had in order. Emphasized by the fact that the video you're covering isn't even labeled as a top 10, but instead just a list of 10 games, but then go on to throw all of that out of the window in order to give yourself something to talk about. They don't even number the entries, they just list off 10 games that you should never play when your parents are home. You're starting off dishonestly, TOG. I expected better. No pop in circumstance or sketches this time. Because it's my first commentary I've made in a long time and first actual video past you know doing my news lock challenge of Pokemon Platinum that I'm trying to fix because I had an issue and lost some of my video files and kind of screwed up my saves. So I'm trying to fix that now. Oh no, don't tell me, is this unscripted? That's gonna cause problems, isn't it? Alright, I'll go ahead and address this. TOG, I understand that 2011 and 2012 commentaries were typically done without a script, and that may have been fine for that time period, but it's kind of an outdated practice now. Mainly because people understand that if you go unscripted, you can wind up with stupid contradictions, a lack of research, or you can just lose your train of thought completely and go on unneeded and unnecessary tangents that have nothing to do with the video. I guess it's not inherently a problem, as there are some people who are the exception and can legitimately go through a video unscripted and unfiltered and seem perfectly okay. But if I'm to be blunt with this, this video proves you're not the exception. <laughs> The world of Japanese role-playing games, better known as JRPGs, is filled with rich worlds, detailed art, and amazing gameplay. And you are about to pull down your pants and take a warm piss all over the entire idea of what a JRPG is, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah you are because you're a special boy. And here's evidence number two that you should script your videos. TOG, these are the intro statements. They're not trying to make an overarching giant point to be debunked just yet. They're simply putting out a subjective idea about what JRPGs actually are. You coming in with, oh, but you're gonna suck, jumps the gun too early and just comes off as a presumptuous statement to poison the well. There are just some titles that you wouldn't want to get caught playing in front of your parents, or your friends, or anyone, really. Before we begin, subscribe to The Gamer and don't forget to ring that bell to become a part of our notification squad where you'll be the first to know of new content. And we have already entered the I am a whore section of the video. See, normally we let our crazy out in small bursts and we wait until the very end of the video. But he isn't afraid to show you just who he is and how crazy he is on the first date. Hell, he gets it out of the way before even the first glass of wine has been served. You mean like your last interjection? Without further ado, it's time for 10 JRPGs you should never play when your parents are home. Criminal Girls. Where do we even start with this one? Both of you, tread lightly. Else I may have a tirade to follow. The premise and execution of Criminal Girls is downright creepy, and there are multiple sequels to the game. Multiple, as in one. The premise follows the everyday story of girls who committed sins and are sent to hell. The young girls need someone to save them, and the hero comes in the form of a middle-aged man who does some questionable things to rid them of their sins. Add in some pretty risque graphics, and you have yourself a family game night in the making. Or just one of the most uncomfortable conversations you've ever had with your parents. But mom, I just need to entice one more girl to free her from her sins and release her from the digital hell. Ooh, you really haven't played Criminal Girls, have you, gamer? The stimulation that you give the girls in the game is to motivate them to fight, not to save them on that basis alone. I suppose if you wanted to argue, you could say that getting in the fight does get you to the top of the tower and thus get you into the position to save the souls of the girls. But then at that point, I can just point towards your really ugly wording as you're implying that the BDSM is the way to save them, which is not really the case. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. I will give you Criminal Girls. It really is nothing short of a smut game. You haven't played it either, have you, TOG? 
Newsflash, the only time smut is involved is during the motivation segments, which isn't the majority of the game. It's a sizable part, but there's much more to it than what people assume at first glance, such as the stories each character told, the symbolism regarding each sin the girls are based on, the actual RPG mechanics of the game, the exploration of the limbo the entire game takes place in. If it was just simply a smut game, there would be a significantly less amount of emphasis on the actual battling, and much more on the tasing. I take my etchy very seriously. So, well done. You, you called out a game for being complete fan service mixed with a new grounds flash hentai game while poorly covering hard subjects such as rape. <clears throat> Excuse me, Rape? TOG, you're mistaken. The only issue of rape is barely even implied by one of the characters' backstories, by the way of which is optional to the rest of the game. If you're trying to say the motivation scenes are rape, then I've got really bad news for you. There's no penetration in this game. Maintenance is a whip, edge play is a shock stick, slippery slope is liquid, tickle party is a feather duster, and aftercare is simple cuddling. Rape would imply penetration. You can maybe say that this game is certainly morally curious in regards to the motivation scenes, known as punishment in Japan, as, yeah, you do play as a middle-aged man doing these sexual acts on what are implied to be teenaged girls, but if I can stress this, it isn't rape. Now, as I'm on this note, I do have something else rubbing me the wrong way. Are you really using this whole interjection just to say, you did good and add nothing to the discussion? What the crap? This does nothing but pat out the video needlessly. There's no point, no jokes, just an, I agree with your entry and move on. I guess it'd be like that sometimes. So, so well done. Claps, kudo, kudo, everyone clap for the guy. Kudos to you. I, I, I have to give you your number 10 spot because that is a good that that is a good example of a bad JRPG that really you shouldn't play around your family or really play in general, in my opinion. But it does make me wonder why this one is only at number ten on the list. Please tell me your other games are not going to be less justifiable than this one. Tog, I trusted you. Fuck, man, even assuming this was a list to be put in order, it isn't. But even assuming it was, your whole thing regarding why is this only at number 10 should be as clear as fucking day as to why. They simply thought the other things were more perverted than criminal girls. Now, whether or not they are would be up for debate, but once again, you're jumping the gun to tell your audience that nothing will be worse than this, continuing to give your audience a preconceived notion of what's to come. Quit killing the fish, Professor. I'm skipping the Shin Megami Tensei segment just because I don't know the series well enough, and given TOG's retorts, I had me to in order to understand anything. EVO, search for Eden. No, 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 just no, no. I'm gonna stop you right there. You think this game, and you are going to continue on to say the, this game is controversial because it includes evolution and the theory of evolution being portrayed very poorly. Cool. Care to actually show us this, TOG, or are you just going to continue your point, cut in after the title, and debunk shit that we haven't seen or heard of? You're jumping the gun again to get to a point where it's not needed yet. No one knows what the crap you're addressing. Uh, that's a lame excuse, especially when compared to the rape-rape-glorified hentai game that you put at number 10. Oh? You mean that thing that they listed first and not actually put to a number? The uh, details, details. I think the bigger issue that I have at this point is due to the fact that because you cut in when you did, no one would know why this is a lame excuse as to why it's controversial to play around the family, especially given some religious families. Also, once again, you're misrepresenting what Criminal Girls is actually about, and, more annoyingly, why Criminal Girls is on the list in the first place, being the creepy nature of the premise and lewd graphics. Compare that to a game with something as ideologically sensitive as Evo, Search for Eden, and even if this was numbered, one could make the argument that Evo would be slightly more controversial given its premise, and especially America's views on religion. Monster Mon Peace. Imagine the world of Pokemon, but instead of cute monsters like Pikachu and Charmander, and now that you've imagined Pokemon, imagine something completely different because this has nothing to do with Pokemon. Cool. Now if we could only know what you mean by that because you cut in before they could show us what the game actually is about. New best friend? F. A fairy tale of the two. <laughs> so, we have just straight up forgotten that we're talking about JRPGs at this point, haven't we? Fucking again? 
This makes the third time in a row you cut off the gamer before we could see what you mean by it not being an RPG. T.O.G. Learn to context. Uh, we, we just have. This is no longer a list about JRPGs. Unless, of course, visual novels count as RPGs these days. You know those games that have no gameplay past choosing what to say and what path to follow? Implying visual novels can't have actual gameplay aspects? Implying none do? I'm sorry, do you even Ace Attorney, Danganronpa, or Valhalla? I mean, yeah, they're the exception. Fine, if that's the hypothetical argument you wish to bring up, go ahead. But that wouldn't change the fact that there are visual novels with actual gameplay aspects to them. Hell, there are JRPGs that are also visual novels. So, if in particular A Fairy Tale of the Two isn't a VN RPG, that's one thing, but don't go around acting as if they don't exist. I know you talk about it having H scenes, and that's being distasteful, but you then also cover that they can be turned off making that completely superfluous, really, at the end of the day. But by default, the H scenes are there, right? The hentai scenes are still technically within the game, regardless of if you could turn them off or not, especially since, according to your target, you can only disable them at the beginning of the game, thus meaning if you could pick it back up later, you'd be unable to turn them off. And according to the footage, they strongly recommend you keep them on, pressuring the player to keep them enabled. Having the option to turn them off doesn't really do you any good if you kept them on when you started playing. And even when you get to the H scenes, they are so goddamn soft core that they really shouldn't be called H scenes. Listen, if you want to choose something like a visual novel and throw it on this list because it's about RPGs, why not pick something like fucking Monster Girl Quest? Then I might have let it slide because at least then there are RPG style battles in it. Why would you put a visual novel on a list of JRPGs? You... you didn't just give an example of a Japanese visual role-playing game novel and then ask why someone would put a visual novel on a countdown about role-playing games. TOG, stop. Script. Please. Oh no. Hyperdimension Neptunia. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Exactly. He apparently remembered this is the last about JRPGs. Uh, I'm shocked, so we're actually going to let this one play out full. A slew of games, and each one is basically dedicated to fan service. Accomplish a goal? A woman dressed in very little will appear on the screen and do a celebration dance. Win a battle? Enjoy the jiggle of female body parts. The game series pretty much exploits women in an effort to please male gamers. Not only should you not play these sexist games in front of your parents, but you probably shouldn't touch the Hyperdimension Neptunia games at all. There are far better JRPGs to enjoy, and ones that do not make you feel so ashamed afterwards. Okay, okay. I will give you that fan service games aren't everyone's cup of tea. That's granted. This is forgetting that it actually has a very quirky and entertaining storyline, and really the gameplay is rather good and the characters are overall likable. Hell, the representative for the Nintendo Wii is a child with an extreme foul mouth. It's hilarious. Yeah, that's great and all, but whoever wrote for the gamer doesn't think so, as given by their clear distaste for the series and even saying that there are better JRPGs to play than it. You're not doing anything to actually debunk the list here, you're merely stating an opinion that your target doesn't agree with. Subjectivity doesn't debunk subjectivity. Sorry. And I will grant you that it breaks the rules of feminism they all apparently have to follow these days. Then let me ask this. Why is a game that your only real bad mark is the fan service higher on a list than a game that literally has you sleeping with the different female protagonist and a fairly poorly covers things like the subject of rape. Because this list isn't organized. Why is this higher on that list than Criminal Girls that breaks almost every rule in the social justice handbook for making an acceptable video game? Because this list isn't organized. Y your rules for numbering things makes no sense to me. Gee, I wonder if it's because the list isn't organized. And even more so tells me that you're using the whole feminist angle just to get more views by being a cool boy ally because let's be honest you're using them incorrectly the fuck you mean using it incorrectly tog buddy i don't get it if the game doesn't match feminist ideals and would offend someone on that basis i fail to see how exactly they're playing the feminist card incorrectly for views is it because it's out of nowhere i mean Sure, it's a little jarring, doesn't particularly fit with the rest of the video, but even still, it's not wrong in the sense that someone could see it as exploiting women. Or objectifying them, considering they're literally designed based off of game consoles, but details, details. Alternatively, you could see it as incorrect because Criminal Girls isn't higher on the list despite it probably breaking more rules of feminism, and thus this would show that they're inconsistent with their feminist ideals, and thus showed an unintentional double standard to a game that's more explicit. 
Like that would imply that you thought this list was organized, and that'd just be silly. Toilet kit. Deep, 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 deep breath. Why the fuck is a toilet humor based top down shooter doing on this list? Let alone, once again, higher than criminal girls. I'm not drunk enough for this. Do you have any idea what the fuck you're talking about when you were writing this script? At least they wrote one. Uh, this is worse than any Josh Scorcher video ever made. And yeah, there's a dated callback reference for you. You missed out. Vandal Hearts 2. Okay, a tactical strategy RPG, but whatever. At least it's a fucking RPG for one, so uh, whatever. Hearts 2. Released in 1999, the game features knights unlike you've ever seen before. Sword slashes, blood splatter, and village girls are kidnapped in front of your eyes. One glimpse at the opening scene and your parents will witness blood, carnage, and countless dead bodies on the screen. The longer you play, the bloodier it gets, and all the violence takes place without even using a gun. Your parents will think that you have no heart when playing Vandal Hearts 2, as the goal is to pretty much kill everything on the screen in the quickest amount of time. Oh yeah, and there's a storyline in there somewhere as well. So we're worried about gore and body counts. Yes, yes, there, there was blood splatter in the game. Very cartoonish blood splatter. But really, games like Sweet Home on the Famicom are more gory than this. Great, fantastic, love it, 10 out of 10. That wouldn't change the fact that Vandal Hearts 2 is still a gory game, though. Like, yeah, sure, if this was shooting for the worst of the worst, Sweet Home would probably make it on this list, but one, whoever wrote the video probably hasn't heard of Sweet Home, and two, even if they had, that wouldn't change the placement here, given that they think there is a lot of dead bodies and gore on the screen at once, thus making it a game that prudish family members who don't like violence would have a problem with. I've exhausted my care for this. Please don't tell me this is how you plan to return. A bunch of repetitiously unscripted videos that attempt to go for the low-hanging fruits that lead you to not try. You're better than this. You're well enough aware that this isn't 2012 anymore, and yet a lot of the same arguments and tactics get brought up here that wouldn't have been out of place back then. It's outdated when it doesn't need to be. Your last commentary proves this. You're able to adapt and upgrade yourself, but here it just seemed like you wanted to get something out there because it's been a while, and that's... Disappointing, to put it lightly. I understand, life has been kicking you in the stomach and keeping you down. You've made videos talking about it, and so, yeah, putting a whole lot of time and effort into videos seems like a trudge. But it'll be worth it to those like myself who do enjoy your work and have been inspired by you. Shit, man, we don't even expect George Raccoon or digital tie levels of editing. Just a thought-out enough video that still had fun being put together. At the very least, put in enough effort to invest into a script, and don't assume every game's list is a countdown, especially when it's not labeled or numbered like one. Anyway, hope things go well for you, though. I would like to see you make a return, despite this video.